You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. I trained through the years how to how to channel that uh, anxiety or nerves, however you want to call it, and, and sort of let that drive me into the zone, you know, into that that sort of state of mind where where you can be your best, you know, and sort of channel all of that into into maximum concentration. But but it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of years. And and you know, in my case, I I used uh, I work with a sports psychologist and mm-hmm. everything to, to to even get better at it. Um, but it's a constant uh, work, you know. It's a work in in progress all the time. You, it's not like you just get there and then you're good. You know, you have to continue working on your head and working on your preparation and, you know, controlling your thoughts and controlling your mind and all of that stuff. It's like, like training, you know, it's no different than physical training or horse training. You mm-hmm. got to train your mind as well. Welcome to the Practical Horseman podcast, featuring conversations with respected riders, industry leaders, and horse care experts. The show is co-hosted by Practical Horseman editors, and our goal is to inform, educate, and inspire. I'm Julia Murphy, and this week's episode is with leaderboard topping international show jumper Daniel Blumen. I caught up with Blumen after his win in the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup Lexington at the 2022 National Horse Show. That victory propelled Blumen to the number one spot on the FEI Jumping World Cup North American League standings. During our conversation, Blumen talks about his rise to the top of the sport and how he handles competing against athletes that he grew up watching and calling superheroes. He also shares insights into his training routine for himself, his horses, and his students. Before we get into the podcast with Blumen, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this week's episode, Cosequin, and share their message. Cosequin ASU joint and hoof pellets contain quality ingredients to support joint and hoof health and leave out the fillers molasses and alfalfa, all while delivering the taste horses love. The colors of our ingredients shine through for a difference you can see. Visit CosequinEquine.com to learn more. Now, enjoy the conversation with Blumen. Well, congratulations oh, about uh, last night again. I mean, you said that was um, the horse's first World Cup win, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Very good. And was it your first World Cup win, or was it the horse's? Uh, no, I actually won a World Cup qualifier in 2009. My first international Grand Prix was a World Cup qualifier over in Toronto. Okay, gotcha. So this this would be probably my second that I can recall. Oh, awesome! That's so exciting. To that's yeah. a long time coming. That's great for you. Yeah, that's cool. Um, well, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about like your background and training and stuff like that. So um, I'm curious, how is it that you got interested in horses and riding to begin with? Uh, well, I, I I started riding started riding because uh, my older cousins took riding lessons in Colombia. Uh-huh. So so that we were put into riding lessons when we were kids there, and that's pretty much how it all began. And when did you start um, competing? <coughs> uh, when did you start making it more of a career than uh, necessarily a hobby? I would say that probably when we moved to America when I was about 10, uh-huh. You know, that we moved to South Florida, so we we got to experience the Florida circuit, which was of course way shorter back then, but it used to be like six or seven weeks in Wellington, and I got the I had the chance to see the big riders compete, and I sort of had the dream. I was only ten years old, but at that point, I sort of had the dream to maybe become a professional rider someday. Yeah. And then I sort of started to to take it really seriously, you know, like really trying to do the best I could and train every day and. I tried a bit and follow the sport. So, yeah. So I, along those years. I thought it was great to last night during the press conference when you said, you know, you and Hunter and Nicholas, you know, you were j- kids not that long ago and you were looking at people who accomplished what you accomplished last night and you've just been working so hard, all three of you, for years and to see that happen for you guys must have just been such a great culmination. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I remember watching the Grand Prix there in Kentucky in the old indoor actually many, many years ago and it was it was pretty special, you know. Like riders that are now retired and stuff like that still jumping and you know, it's it's we were we were once those those kids, you know, yeah. watching and following the sport. 
What's it like to even compete against some of those riders that you watched when you were growing up as a kid? Um, you know, it's not easy. I've been already doing it for, for I don't know, like 13 years, almost 14 years mm-hmm. competing already with them. So then you sort of try to start getting used to it. But uh, but it's, it's, it's definitely a process. And uh, and really, sometimes you still, you still sit and wonder, you know, and remember how it used to be. But I mean, you're you're really competing to, to some of your with some of your idols, right? People you yeah. look up to always and you thought of them almost like superheroes and then you find yourself competing against them and then at some point you have to start seeing them as as normal humans, otherwise you can't beat them, you know? <laughs> because you're always so so terrified of how good they are that you don't you don't really give your chance. But I guess that eventually you just sort of start trusting yourself more and your program and, and you know, everything that you're doing and you start becoming one of them. Do you ever um, get nerves when you're showing? I mean, you can, like you said, you're competing against so many of these great people and you are one of those great riders now, but do you ever get nerves at competitions? And if you do, how do you deal with it? Always. Yeah. I always get nerves. Always. Uh, how I deal with it? Well, I, I train through the years how to how to channel that uh, anxiety or nerves however you want to call it and and sort of let that drive me into the zone you know into that that sort of state of mind where where you can be your best you know and sort of channel all of that into into maximum concentration but but it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of years and and you know in my case i i used the uh, I work with a sports psychologist and everything to, to, to even get better at it. Um, but it's a constant uh, work, you know, it's a work in, in progress all the time. You, it's not like you just get there and then you're good. You know, you have to continue working on your head and working on your preparation and, you know, controlling your thoughts and controlling your mind and all of that stuff. It's like, like training, you know, it's no different than physical training or horse training. You mm-hmm. got to train your mind as well. And this kind of touches on that same topic, but do you have any kind of a routine before a big class that helps you get set up for it? Yeah, 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 very much. You know, I, I and, and again, it's something that I've developed through the years to, to sort of get better and better at it. But I do have a routine. You know, I like to do my workout with uh, with my physical with my physical trainer. Uh, his name is Diego Linares from from Balance mm-hmm. from Rider Balance which I've been working with for about a year and he, he's really helped a lot my position and, you know, and, and my, my body, but also my mind because I made it part of my routine and, and that sort of already puts me in the mood of, of an important competition. I do, I do that workout a couple hours before going, going to the show to compete in the big class. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I like to ride my horse as close to the class as possible. So right after that, I go to the show and I flat my horse, you know, I, work with my horse mm-hmm. prior to competition and then you know we we compete so yeah i try to that puts me in a very very uh how can i say very um zoned uh yeah state of mind for about three or four hours you know i think that for my personality more than that it just becomes too tiring so i try to just keep maximum concentration for that amount of time and and then then release the pressure does your personal trainer, does he travel with you or do you kind of know the exercises and you practice them on your own? No, no, we work, he doesn't travel with me, but we work on the, on the over, over Zoom. Yeah, you know, yeah. Over FaceTime or whatever, you know, like uh, we do our sessions, our sessions online. Okay, gotcha. Um, and then, so going into your training a little bit, um, what would you say your training philosophy is? Oh, my training philosophy is very simple. You know, you got I let the horses be horses. You know, I, I like my horses to spend a lot of time outside in the paddocks and allow, uh, outside in the trails and, you know, like be outside of their box as much as possible. I I believe very much in, in having good dressage and good flat work. And then for the rest, it's just, you know, to let the horses express themselves, you know, like yeah. just sort of get to know them and, and make a, a plan for each of them individually, and and then that's it. Let them be happy. And are you currently teaching students? Uh, at the moment, uh, yes. I started training a little bit again. I mean, I mentor some people through the years. You know, that yeah. I, 
that I've done, you know, but but sort of more on on more consulting than, than yeah. actual training because I'm not with them all the time. Right. Uh, but now I have uh, full time uh, Halle Grimes. You know, started working. Yeah. Working with us. Uh, I don't know. It's been with us like two or three months. You know, okay. like we're just starting starting the relationship. Okay. But uh, but that's and then I mean we have a blue money question. We have uh, you know, we have other other kids and, and for and young riders that ride with us, you know, but they don't, but I don't directly work with them all the time. Like right. Alexa Schweitzer works yeah. with she's been with us for a long time. And, mm-hmm. you know, she's a great friend and she's all like a sister for, to me. And she trains mostly with Marky, but of course with me a lot, all, always, you know, I'm, I'm very involved, but I think that when you're working with horses and you're working with young riders, you know, it takes a lot of attention and a lot of time. So, I already have my own horses that I also have to take care of, so I you can only do what you can do. So yeah, I know, I, w- I would like to take on more, but I, I don't have time, you know. So that's just already between between what I already had, and now on top of it, Holly, which is a mm-hmm. rider that aspires to make it all the way to the top, and I believe she will. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's already it's already a lot of work, you know. Yeah. Oh a, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I totally get that. So um, when you are teaching students, um, what do you think is your teaching style? I, you know, I, I try to let the, 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 the young riders understand the importance of, of the horse, you know, of, yeah. of how to keep the horse at its best, how to let them express themselves the best they can, and sort of understand how to, to manage the horses, which I think is the most complex part of what we do you know i think that you get to see a lot of riders that are very good ring riders but you don't get to see too many that actually know how to manage and and keep the horses going well you know so so i try to just explain them a little bit how i've gotten to where i am and a bit my philosophy and and that's it because at the end of the day i think that riders have different styles of riding and and you cannot expect all of the people that ride with you or that want to work with you right. to ride the way you ride. Right. You know, that's that's variable. That that can change. But the one thing that should remain constant is the management of the horses and and how to keep the horses going on the day to day. You right. know, so the people that are in my in, in our program per se or that want to consult with me or, or train with me, you know, we, we have that in common, you know, the way we manage the horses and the day to day of the of the routines of the horses, how they ride and, and their individual styles. I, I try not to touch that very much. I don't think that that's at the end of the day that relevant to the final result. Right. Yeah. You can't you can't put everyone in a box. Exactly. Yeah. Especially because, you know, it's just the way you ride, you know, your bodies and everything, my body and your body or Alexa's body or Hallie's body or, you know, Marky's body or my brother's body or, you know, different people in the, in, in the organization. We, we, we have different confirmation, you know, so mm-hmm. we can't, I cannot expect them to, to, to have the same position I have or me have the position they have. We, got, we each have our individual positions. We try to do the best we can with them. But, uh, but what must remain constant is the, the day-to-day work. Right. Um, and then do you have, when you're training at home with your horses, uh, do you have a favorite exercise of ty- or type of work that you think is super important? one you know, like that's that's a hard one there's a lot of moving pieces so I, I i can't say i can pick one but if i had to tell you the most the single most important thing that we do is the paddock you know i think that the horses need to spend hours outside okay yeah actually my number one thing is let horses be horses you know yeah. a horse that cannot be a horse very difficult to work with their brain doesn't work the same way their bodies don't work the same way yeah I think you need you need to allow the horses be horses. Mm-hmm. And just a couple more questions to wrap up here. So, why do you think you've been so successful as a rider? Well, I think that being so successful is a very subjective uh, <laughs> subjective observation. You know, I I don't think I've been so successful. I, I think I've I've had success. And, and have had a good run because I've, I've been uh, lucky to find great horsemen along the way that have taught me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and my love for the horses have uh, put me in the path of great horses. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe that motivation for the sport has all also uh, introduced me to, 
to 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 an owner like uh, Kim or an owner like uh, William, mm-hmm. you know that that uh, support, you know uh, my my mission and my vision of of the sport. You know they allow me to practice the sport the way that I believe mm-hmm. it should be practiced. You know, so I think that combination of that and on top of it, I get to enjoy it with my family. Mm-hmm. You know, I I think I have an incredible group of people around me you know yeah. i get to work with uh with my cousins that are like my brothers and, and with my brother steven who is an incredible horseman himself you know and now with my wife ariel and you know and our kids you know i, I just have a a great lifestyle right you know? so when when you have all of those things that i just mentioned well normally success is just a consequence you know right it's not, it's not like you have to, to, to really focus on the success it just happens by itself if you're doing everything else right yeah, that's beautifully put. And um, what do you think is the hardest part of the sport for you? I mean, it could be anything from emotionally or physically, um, but, you know, it is a hard sport, and I think every rider struggles with some aspect of it. So what would you say is the hardest part? I think every sport in, a, in, the, in the highest level is, is very difficult. You yeah. know, you're competing against a lot of very good people, very successful people, and uh, putting a lot of energy and time into becoming the best. I think on top of that, in our sport, we get to do it for many, 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 many years. Mm-hmm. So the management of the time, I find, is the most the most difficult part. You know, you don't want to get yeah. burned out. You don't want your brain to suffocate and not be able to really enjoy it anymore. You know, so you yeah. have to always keep yourself in 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 a good balance. Yeah. So that's that's my main target. You know, to to make sure that my emotions and my mind are are balanced and that I have a balanced life and that although we have to travel so much to competitions, I have a very simple and normal life mm-hmm. when I'm at home and try to be at home as much as I can. You know, so that that is that is the, the, the biggest the biggest challenge for me personally at yeah. this point. You yeah. Know, I'm sure that every writer has different challenges. But for me that's that's the biggest challenge. All the other aspects of it, I think, I have pretty much under control. And so, what's next for you? What's next on your calendar? Where are you off to? Well, this week we go to the Royal mm-hmm. in Toronto. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite horse shows. Um, and then after that, uh, we have like a little bit of Florida to do there with other horses and stuff like that before I head over to Geneva, okay. uh, which is you know perhaps the well arguably in my opinion at least the best indoor horse show in the world mm. and then um i think i'll probably go to fort worth with uh with something you know with with, with, with any horse right because i've never been and i want to sort of see it mm-hmm. and that's it wrap up the year get ready for the next yeah okay well awesome um good luck with all of that but that's all i have for you today and i really appreciate you just taking the time and congratulations again on last night thank you i appreciate it have a good day you too thanks for listening to this week's episode with daniel blumen and a big thank you to the sponsor of this week's episode cosequin learn more at cosequinequine.com you can subscribe to the practical horseman podcast on apple podcast spotify stitcher or wherever you listen. While you're there, please rate and review the show. Also, tune into our mini-sode series, The Fod Pod, where you'll hear audio lessons from our favorite Practical Horseman On Demand clips. At Practical Horseman On Demand, you can enjoy hundreds of how-to videos and get insider access to exclusive interviews and lectures, slow motion demonstrations, and step-by-step tutorials taught by top-level pros in the hunter, jumper, equitation, and eventing disciplines. When you tune into the FOD pod, listen closely for a promo code for 15% off your Practical Horseman On Demand subscription. Thanks again for listening to this week's episode. I'm Julia Murphy, and you've been listening to the Practical Horseman Podcast.